It's time to fire David Fisdale. Ha! Get him out! Get him out! Get Gase out! Get Kenny Atkinson! <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, I mean, I'm serious. I mean... You're, you're this, serious this, this, about this, firing David Fisdale after one like game? This has got to be like one of the dumbest all-time things I've ever seen. Honestly. Uh, you, you have a star rookie. Yeah. And your star rookie is really, you know, you want to put him in a small forward. You want to put him at a shooting guard. I get it. You're going to open the, you're going to open your season on the road at the Spurs. Yeah. And you're going to tell the kid you're playing point guard for our team. Hey. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, hated I, it. I, look, I, I, I hated it. And you know what? It might've cost him the game. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just going to tell you right now. It, it is mind bogglingly. I, I, I can't. I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm like, what, 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 when did this happen? Yeah. When, when, when did this idea, like, come to him and say, you know, this is what I'm going to do because I'm going to be the next Red Auerbach, <laughs> or I'm going to be the next Red Holzman, or I'm going to be the next, uh, you know, Popovich. I mean, are you I mean, like, what the hell was that? Yeah, and what's frustrating is so that, you know, the Knicks actually battle back. They're down like 17 in the yeah, first well, half. It was a mess. Back when, he ch when he put a real point guard right, in Right, exactly. So that's what's annoying about it. Is you feel like they might have had a shot to win the game if he had figured out that Alfred Payton was the best point guard for this team uh, to <laughs> start out the season. Holy, to start out the season. Hey, let me ask you a question. How do you not know that? Yeah, I don't know. That's bad. That Can was a bad one. Can you explain this to me? It was a bad one. I mean, it's game one, man. I just, right, I know. It's game one. Like, I didn't expect them to win, but I didn't expect to see what I saw. Now, sometimes when decisions happen in sports that I completely disagree with, I try to, I try to see the other side. Like, what is David Fisdale thinking here? Am I missing something? With this one, I can't, I cannot. It's one thing if he's like a three or four year player. It's another thing if this is his first NBA game. On the road against on one of the, the best road. coach teams in sports. And you're going to give him the ball right. and say, you got to handle this? Yeah. Uh, maybe he's thinking, ah, uh, you know, ball in his hands. He's more calm. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. I can't make an excuse for it. I can't. Uh, uh, look, I can't. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not happy, I'm happy they fought back. I Dude, am. I am not going to get into all the weeds with all this crap, but I just, like, it just shows me, like, sometimes. It, it's how clueless people can be. And and I don't know if he was trying to get a point across. Again, I, I, I'm i not following this thing. Like, you know, I feel like I, I, I would have known this last night. And I, I'm i just, I was stunned. Well, I think a lot of people were surprised. It didn't make much sense to start the game that way. It, it's, it's your it's your prize rookie. Yeah. Let's get him off to a good start. Let's play him in a position where it's like the whole thing is positionalist. I, I, I know all that, you know, but let's get him in a spot. Where and the same thing can be said for Capo Caco, by the way. You have a you have a prize rookie. Let's put them in spots where we believe we can get the best out of them. Put them on the ice with the best players. Put them put them in a position where yeah, he gets to handle the ball, but he doesn't have to handle the ball coming up the uh, up the court making all these other decisions that he's not he's never had to make before. Yeah, I mean you you think about the pressure the anxiety that goes into your first game as a pro when you're the third overall pick in market one for the Knicks who have no other savior and you're opening up on the road against a guy who is looked at as the best coach in the sport. And David Fisdale just basically, you know, puts uh, some flank stakes around his neck and throws them to the Lions, right? It yeah, doesn't make I, any sense. I don't sense. know if there's a bigger picture or a bigger message here. I didn't hear David uh, talking after the game last night. I, I don't know what his explanation is. Um, you know, I guess we'll have to wait until today to find out. But, man, I mean, it's like they got off to such a bad start. You know, and Alonzo Trier is throwing up threes from all over the place. Right. Yeah, that, that guy, he, he's a guy to watch. Because I could see him, if he doesn't get the playing time he likes, if he's he gets benched because he's an irresponsible shooter and stuff, he's a guy that's going to open his mouth. But listen, th those are all the negatives with the Knicks, and it's going to be probably another season of, of mostly negatives. You know, the fact that this team didn't fold and was up six with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter and then folded then, but still was able to overcome that and, and sort of you play know like, like half, NBA second, basketball. Yeah. That was, that was encouraging to me. The, I, the third quarter was really, I mean, it was great. It's probably some of the best basketball they've played in a long time. Right. It looked like a real team. Yes. And you know why? Because they, they finally put a point guard back there. Sure. And he kind of settled everybody down and everybody all of a sudden started playing and playing relaxed basketball. And it looked like, they look like that they really had something. I, I I just to me it's just mind-boggling that you would do this to a rookie out the gate. 
Yeah. Well, and it also, I think, is an indictment of these point cards, supposedly, that they have. You know, the Dennis Smiths of the world, the Neil Akinans of the world, the Paytons of the world. I mean, like, they, they still don't have an answer for that position. If right, they got a the million way, guys there you're waiting you to step start up. That, you start your season the way he did last night, and, and look, it's one game, and there's 81 more games to go. Yeah. And I don't know why last night had to be the experiment. Yeah, right. Maybe exactly. he thought, you know, this is going to be a Go mismatch. conventional in, in, in week one. I mean, in uh, game one. Go conventional. They and did see how in it works the second out. half. That's the thing. And they came I, back and, and they competed. what would have happened had it been like that? You know, these NBA games, you watch the last five minutes of the game, you find out what's going on. Sure, basically. Right? Yeah, most Pretty of much. the time, yeah. But the, the, the way that they started was like – what were, what were you thinking when you when you I think it was the score at one point was like eighteen to four or whatever the hell oh yeah it was. well yeah th- what th- were you thirty seven to twenty I, no I, I was thinking this this is exactly what I didn't want to see from this team uh, we're going to get calls tomorrow about how pathetic they are and they're going to be another seventeen win team uh, R J Barrett's a bust because they're right off the bat he's turning the ball over I thought we were going to hear all that overreaction in in game one that's what I thought but you know. I, I'm not a silver lining guy most of the time, as you know. Um, but uh, the fact that they did come back and had a lead late in the game, I think, is encouraging. And we'll see what they do against the Nets.